Philo started with an aim to make decision making easy and accurate in agriculture, enabling optimal farm operations and precision farming. In this episode of Builders for Bharat, we uncover how Philo is uniquely positioned to develop state of the art solutions for the farming industry. As you said, there are various uh, parameters when you have to take any decision in farming, uh, starting from your uh, climate, uh, soil, uh, variety in some of the cases. So uh, we handle this uh, by deploying our devices uh, throughout various uh, climatic zones. So starting from uh, apples in Kashmir, we have devices, uh, and then uh, Guntur in Chile, we, we are working. So we have uh, the data for across the various climatic zones, are, and our models are built in such a, uh, such a way that they take this data as an input uh, uh, to provide any advice. So once you have this data as an input, uh, then your uh, your model will be able to tweak it as an uh, more the variation come in in any of these parameters, right? And we uh, currently have around a billion data points across these uh, these devices that we have deployed in last uh, five years. So uh, our models are robust enough to handle any kind of uh, variations. Uh, maybe it's soil pH or uh, or its uh, weather conditions around the farm or your uh, variety that you are growing or the crop that you are growing. Now, another good thing about uh, India, as you pointed out, is uh, there are various uh, uh, climatic zones and various soil types. Right? So once you have the uh, models for India that are working perfectly fine, then it's very easy to scale it uh, globally. So India is the best place to build uh, this kind of models because of the variation it offers. And we have been able to do it with uh, uh, with various data points and other methods that we basically uh, use to collect data points, starting from our ground agronomists to uh, the farmers that uh, feed in the data points. So that way we have taken uh, care of all the variations that can come in while you have to take any decision on the farm. India and Indian farmers have responded very well towards adopting the technology. So I'll, I'll say a couple of uh, my personal instances. So uh, I remember that my grandfather uh, father used to plow the field with the bulls and then tractors came. And within four or five years, tractor replaced all the bulls. And I clearly remember that in childhood, uh, our whole summer vacation used to uh, get spent on the post harvest process of wheat. So uh, initially, we used to uh, do the harvesting and then use the thresher to remove the sacks and then we know us to separate it out. And it used to take a couple of months. And then a uh, combined uh, harvester came and the job was done in a couple of hours. And then today, if you see uh, all the 100% of harvesting in uh, wheat happens with the same technology. So I don't think the technology adoption has ever been challenged. Uh, if I'll uh, give you some data of the current, uh, how the farmers are responding with the current technologies. So every year, 1.3 million hectares of land in uh, India is added under the micro irrigation, which is largest in the world. In India, 1 million tractors are being sold. And the high quality for water soluble fertilizer market has also gone to a billion dollar. So this is the kind of adoption if you see the Indian farmers have done towards technology. Now, if I talk about the Philo, we started with 10 farmers in first year and then we showed them the results. And in a couple of years, we were working with more than 700 farmers. And right now, in four years, we are working with more than 8,000 farmers. So if you show the results, if you show the value, I don't think any farmer in India will have any problem in adopting the uh, technologies. And when I talk about what has been the biggest lever for technology like us, I think climate change uh, is the biggest lever. So, if I talk about the recent instance of uh, the heat wave, the crop like grapes where uh, the heat stress was more and farmers were following the fixed practices of irrigation, most of the plots were went under the stress and there were uneven sprouting. The pest like uh, uh, caterpillar, which was not the uh, major uh, problem, has have stem borer and caterpillar have become a, big, a bigger challenge now. So the climate change and then the water shortage and the soil quality that are going down has been the biggest lever for us. What basically how, how we are uh, 
leveraging all these challenges basically we are educating farmers on the challenges that uh, they are facing specific to the problems that these are the challenges at this time and what you need to do and that's where the adoption is increasing that farmers seeing us that the philo is a solution provider for all our specific problems and the problems related to climate problems related with the data and that's where the adoption uh, is increasing and one more factor that we see is that you need the right product and right solutions and and that's where we uh, in fact uh, to start with when we started working with the farmers the farmers were not ready to accept the advisories that we were providing to the farmers and then we realized that we need to work with them and we both the founder shifted to nasik we worked with the farmer for a couple of years and worked with them to um, help them understand what is how it is used and what impact it is creating so right now if you see we have 98% adherence rate to our irrigation advisories and more than 70% adherence rate to our fertilization and pesticide advisories so if you build a right product provide right value add to the farmers the adoption has always been the better we use ai in various insights that we provide starting from uh, a uh, disease and pest predictions models to uh, weather prediction models uh, we have a various use cases of ai so uh, the accuracy of these models also changes according to the uh, particular use case or particular problem that we are trying to solve for example for disease pest prediction models uh, some of the reg uh, regression models that we use the r square value of those models starts from 0.93 so we basically deploy a model once we have this uh, 0.93 of r square value and then it goes up to 0.98 uh, as as we have more and more data uh, similarly for the uh, weather models that we have uh, our weather models are 50% more accurate uh, than any other uh, weather models that we are uh, using globally so uh, basically uh, the parameters for the weather models are uh, precision or recall in case of a rainfall event so uh, and these also change right so uh, in case of for example rainfall uh, in our case recall is a better parameter to measure uh, whether it was accurate or not so we have 0.89 of uh, recall value average across across the uh, models in case of rainfall for uh, temperature humidity and other climatic parameters that we try to predict using ai there are uh, accuracy is uh, the average r uh, mean square error there uh, reduces up to 0.2 0.3 so uh, we have quite a uh, good accuracy in terms of the models uh, that we have built now uh, there are other models that we are trying to build uh, uh, and and the accuracy of these increases basically as you have more and more data as i said we have around a billion data points now where we have trained these models and there are various ways uh, we retrain these models right apart from the data that we collect from devices we also have the field agronomists they basically collect uh, the data for the models and we retrain these models on a monthly basis similarly a lot of farmers feed in activities that they are doing and these activities data also goes into our models so there also we are able to increase uh, the accuracy so there are various ways we try to uh, kind of tune in the accuracy of these models and parameter uh, of accuracy starts from 0.89 in some of the cases up to 0.98 in in cases like uh, uh, for example uh, disease and pest prediction currently we uh, provide four solutions to any farmers four decision points basically one is uh, irrigation when and how much you should irrigate second is which all fertilizers you should put in at what stage of the uh, plant a third is which all disease and pest might come and when you have to uh, take any spray and fourth is of course the weather prediction the live weather condition at the farm and prediction for next 15 days so uh, the adoption rate if we see we have a 98% adoption in uh, in irrigation situ so that we are able to directly measure it because we have the sensors for that so once a farmer uh, irrigates basically uh, his sensor shows us that he has irrigated and we are able to measure that so we have 90% uh, adherence rate in uh, irrigation in uh, feature for example for disease and pest we have around 75% of adherence rate and 70% uh, of adherence rate in in case of fertilizer schedule the weather prediction obviously uh, uh, they see and they use it in their other activities there no adherence rate uh, there but uh, our most used feature today is uh, irrigation because they are able to directly measure it and to increase the adherence in in the other features we are uh, working on some uh, new ai uh, models uh, 
our new AI products which can basically increase uh, the adherence uh, rate in our other other uh, uh, disease and pest prediction and fertigation. Now also uh, our average app usage, if you see, it's 15 days per day per user. So every day a user spends around 15 minutes on, uh, 15 minutes on Philo apps and he is able to uh, take his decision based on the data that he receives from that. If you see, India holds 180 million hectare of agricultural land and that provides an opportunity of more than 76 billion dollars. So it's a huge opportunity. Uh, uh, within India and about us, we are market leader in precision agriculture. We have 100% customer retentions where farmers have to purchase subscription every year and last five years not even a single farmer have dropped, uh, uh, dropped out. And in terms of climate, we have saved more than 100 billion liters of water, 4 million kg of carbon emission. Consistently, farmers are getting 25 to 50% better income around 80% of export quality of produce and 20% uh, better produce. So these are the uh, value add that uh, we have been able to provide. And so how, I mean, I mean, how we, we have been able to do it. So like I, I said, I mean, the first thing that we have been, uh, I think we have uh, been doing well is listening to the, uh, our customers, being very close to them and adopting to whatever the demand that they are, uh, they are asking. So listening to them, providing a right customer service. So the very beginning that we realized that this is more of a agriculture problem and we invested heavily into our agronomy R&D team. We also deployed ground agronomists who continuously collecting the data from the farms, from the farmers, providing us the right input so that we are able to build the right product uh, for them and right solutions for them. And that's where you see the 100% retention, more than 98% adherence rate, and the, even after growing 3 to 4x every year. I mean, precision agriculture itself is a very big space, like I already told, uh, more than 76 billion opportunity. And we, we are continuously working to reach more and more farmers and provide right solutions to the farmers. So, uh, like I said, I mean, we focus on how much adherence of farmers uh, are following for our advisories. And our, we keep on improving more and more solutions, bringing more and more products to increase the adherence rate, to increase the adoption of precision agriculture, and also reduce the cost of technology so that uh, going forward, every farmer can afford the technology and, and whole India becomes our market. Yeah, so Philo is a precision agriculture platform. Uh, we, uh, we understand the precise need of plants. So we have IoT devices that we deploy at farm. They understand the precise need of plants and sends data to our cloud server, where we analyze that using our agronomy and machine learning models to generate tax and size to the grower and mobile app. So the mobile apps are multilingual. And the app is very easy to understand. So when we worked, we were working with the farmers, we realized that how do they think? So one instance I can tell you like, the, every most of them understand the uh, traffic signal. So we created our user experience in such a way that the way farmer understand it, the same way we used to provide the product. So that's the basic core of the work that we do at Philo. All our uh, devices or all our uh, various mobile apps that we offer are basically around that and there are some other new uh, products uh, that will be using uh, the cutting edge technologies uh, heavily to come up with a more uh, precise and more uh, robust solutions. Our core uh, mission at Philo is to uh, increase the adoption of precision agriculture uh, technologies in the country. So the basic uh, aim is if you are able to help a farmer grow the best quality yield uh, from his farm by taking the decisions that he takes on a daily basis, uh, then I think we are sorted. One of the reason why we started uh, uh, Philo was that, I mean, we both the founder, like I said, we both belong to farmer family and have living uh, in our respective villages. And the, we, we were fortunate that we were uh, good, we got the good education, but most of us, our friends uh, could not get it. And even after having two or three hectares of land, 
they went on to work in the factory just to get 10,000, 12,000 of fixed income uh, per month. And I think a fixed income is the major constant why most of the farmers were leaving the farming and uh, going and uh, shifting to our work. And the major issue is that because you do not get the consistent quality of produce and consistent yield. And this is the problem we want to solve that with the precise, uh, precision agriculture platform, we bring a consistent yield and consistent quality of produce to the farmers so that they get consistently a good income.